at Old Man Eckert's. Philip Eckert lived for many years in an old weather-stained wooden house about three miles from the little town of Marion in Vermont. There must be quite a number of persons living who remember him, not unkindly, I trust, and know something of the story that I am about to tell. Old Man Eckert, as he was always called, was not of a sociable disposition and lived alone. As he was never known to speak of his own affairs, nobody thereabout knew anything of his past, nor of his relatives, if he had any. Without being particularly ungracious or repellent in manner or speech, he managed, somehow, to be immune to impertinent curiosity, yet exempt from the evil repute with which it commonly revenges itself when baffled. So far as I know, Mr. Eckert's renown as a reformed assassin or a retired pirate of the Spanish main had not reached any ear in Marion. He got his living cultivating a small and not very fertile farm. One day he disappeared, and a prolonged search by his neighbors failed to turn him up or throw any lights upon his whereabouts or his whyabouts. Nothing indicated preparation to leave. All was as he might have left it to go to the spring for a bucket of water. For a few weeks little else was talked of in that region. Then old man Eckert became a village tale for the ear of the stranger. I do not know what was done regarding his property. The correct legal thing, doubtless. The house was standing, still vacant and conspicuously unfit when I last heard of it some twenty years afterward. Of course, it came to be considered haunted, and the customary tales were told of moving lights, dolorous sounds, and startling apparitions. At one time, about five years after the disappearance, these stories of the supernatural became so rife, or through some attesting circumstances, seemed so important that some of Marion's most serious citizens deemed it well to investigate, and to that end arranged for a night session on the premises. The party to this undertaking were John Holcomb, an apothecary, Wilson Merle, a lawyer, and Andrus C. Palmer. Andrus C. Palmer, the teacher of the public school, all men of consequence and repute. They, they were to meet at Holcomb's house at eight o'clock in the evening of the appointed day and go together to the scene of their vigil, where certain arrangements for their comfort, a provision of fuel and the like, for the season was winter, had been already made. Palmer did not keep the engagement, and after waiting a half hour for him, the others went to the Eckert house without him. They established themselves in the principal room before a glowing fire, and without other light than it gave, awaited events. It had been agreed to speak as little as possible. They did not even renew the exchange of views regarding the defection of Palmer, which had occupied their minds on the way. Probably an hour had passed without incident. When they heard, not without emotion, doubtless, the sound of an opening door in the rear of the house, followed by footfalls in the room adjoining that in which they sat. The watchers rose to their feet, but stood firm, prepared for whatever might ensue. A long silence followed. How long, neither would afterward undertake to say. And then 
the door between the two rooms opened, and a man entered. It was Palmer. He was pale, as if from excitement, as pale as the others felt themselves to be. His manner, too, was singularly distray. He neither responded to their salutations, nor so much as looked at them, but walked slowly across the room in the light of the failing fire, and opening the front door, passed out into the darkness. It seems to have been the first thought of both men that Palmer was suffering from fright, that something seen, heard, or imagined in the back room had deprived him of his senses. Acting on the same friendly impulse, both ran after him through the front door. But neither they, nor anyone, ever again saw or heard of Andrus Palmer. This much was ascertained the next morning. During the session of Messrs. Holcomb and Merle at the haunted house, a new snow had fallen to a depth of several inches upon the old. In this snow, Palmer's trail from his lodging in the village to the back door of the Eckert house was conspicuous. But there it ended. From the front door, nothing led away but the tracks of the two men who swore that he had preceded them. Palmer's disappearance was as complete as that of old man Eckert himself, whom, indeed, the editor of the local paper somewhat graphically accused of having reached out and pulled him in. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black-Eyed Children. And, sometimes, I retell classic ghost stories by authors such as Ambrose Bierce. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs in 2022. Till midnight. Cheers. Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix here. That's PX here. While the music was the classic ghost processional by that patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod. The text of today's story was supplied by Project Gutenberg. Thank you for listening.